and it will be available on the district's YouTube channel after this um, session and when my miracle worker, Dan Cortese, does all the technical stuff behind the scenes, and he's a genius, by the way, um, he'll send me the link to YouTube and I will send it all to you so you don't have to go searching through the 97 Rotary channels on YouTube. And you can feel free to share that link with everybody in your club. If you would like the link to previous sessions you didn't attend, please shoot me an email, Marilyn Sanderson 1617 at gmail. I'll also put that in the chat room. If you um, have questions, Mary and Steve, how do you wanna handle questions? At the time they come up or pause and take them as they accumulate, what's your pleasure? I'll do whatever Steve wants to do, but usually questions at the end. Is that good with you, Steve? Okay. Sure. Hold your questions at the end. Um, if you want to communicate with other people during this session, please put it in the chat box and I'll monitor that as well. So I don't think there's anything else I need to say because we've got two experts here today who are going to talk to you about block grants and DDF, two of the most confusing subjects around. So uh, Mary, you can screen share right now. Oh, okay. I thought Steve was gonna go first. Steve, do you wanna screen share? I was, I was real brief and it's gonna be kind of a lead in to what Mary's gonna do. If you want me to go first or I can go last, I'm good either way. Do you wanna screen share do, or do you want me to bring it up for you? I can screen Let share. Me... Okay, so you're gonna do Steve first? Steve said he'd do it. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. Mine will kind of lead into what Mary's doing. Oh. So. Um, Steve, it's really difficult to understand you uh, with your speaker. Is there some different way for you to uh, talk with us? Uh, I have the microphone. Is it not coming through well? Yeah, it's a little difficult to understand, though. Mm. Okay, you speak a little slowly, and we'll, we'll, our ears will catch up with you. Okay, I'll go slow. Do you want me to screen share them? Yes. My presentation is really short because it's only about DDF, but you'll need to understand the DDF in order to understand what Mary's gonna be talking to you about. So I'm basically gonna cover what is DDF, let me get this started, and how does it work? So you're gonna hear throughout Rotary, you're gonna hear us talk about DDF. DDF is district designated funds. And district designated funds are created when you make a donation to Rotary International to the annual fund. That money sits in the annual fund for three years and generates interest that Rotary International, that the Rotary Foundation uses uh, to fund its projects. After three years, they pull that donation back out and they split it in half. Half of it goes to the world fund. The other half comes back to the district as district designated funds. Those monies we distribute to the clubs and the clubs can use up to 50% of what they received that year for a community block grant or a district grant, which is what Mary is gonna discuss. You can use some or all of that 50% uh, that's allocated, but there is a deadline involved and that's usually right at the beginning of your year as president. The other 50% split used as on the global side for global grants, Polio Plus, VTT, Ukraine, disaster relief, et cetera. So whatever portion is left over from the funds from your district grant, whether you used a portion, some or all of it, that money after that deadline becomes a global only available on the global grant side. So you don't lose the money if you don't invest in a district community grant. It just reduces the amount that you can use on the global side. Does that make sense to everybody? Does anybody have questions on that, on how that works? Okay, that ends my portion. <laughs> that way you know the DDF that comes back 
and Mary is going to talk to you about one of the ways that you can spin that DDF. Okay, let's see if my share screen works. Let me unshare first. Okay. Now. What happened? Oh, there we go. Stop share. Okay, you should be able to share now. Okay. Okay, can you see? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Um, first of all, I'm, I don't have my window open that shows all your faces, but I'm thinking maybe many of you have already applied for community grants, but if you don't get on DB very often and I have a feeling many people in our club, they get their password and their login and then they ignore it and then they can't find it when it's time to fill something out in DACDB. So, um, and if, if there's, you know, um, uh, difficulty, a lot of people have difficulty with DACDB. I'm lucky I've been using it since it was first introduced to our district, which, um, has given me many years of working in DACDB. So I have, there isn't anything in DACDB that I haven't been able to overcome. Uh, once in a while, things are changed up, but when you open up DACDB and, it, and it, if it accepts your login, then you will see the file tabs on the top. Do you guys all see that? Yes. In the blue row, uh, click on district. And if you go down to, um, can you see my arrow? Yes. Okay. You go down to district grants, which is right there. It's the one with the little globe. Then um, you open that up and you'll see a page like this. And the numbers uh, are, are maybe different but you always have to make sure this year right here is correct. And you can change the year by clicking and putting in the correct year. I think there's a drop down and it'll give you the correct year. Uh, so this is what you'll see initially when you open district grants, uh, when you go to the um, overview. Okay, then on the left side in I need to make this a little bit bigger, but you'll see right here on the left, it says club grants view. So what I did was I <clears throat> used the screen from our last year's grant. So when I uh, put this in, I um, it, it last year we actually applied for COVID mask purchase. And then, um, and that was to share the masks with our community. You have to remember every grant you apply for in here has to be for the benefit of your own community. Okay. All right. So when you when you click on <coughs> when you click on this, you go to that pencil. That's really important to remember. Any changes that you want to make on any of the pages in your grant, you have to click on the pencil, okay? And when you click on the pencil, then this is the screen. I hope you guys can see this okay. Yeah. This is the screen that you'll see. And what you do simply to start your grant out is you just simply work through all of these tabs. And it's a very, very simple process. So initially, you're going to first put in your details. Now, when it tells you to pick a project name, <coughs> keep, it, keep it simple and keep it related to what exactly you're doing. Okay. A lot of people get kind of wrapped up in, well, I don't know what to name this. We're going to do, you were going to do some uh, minor things within a bigger picture. And I would say just name it whatever your bigger picture is. 
Now, as you scroll through all of the items here, um, just select like, like when you get to, sorry, my screen's kind of tiny here. Um, when you get to, all of it's easy to fill in, but when you get to the target completion date, be realistic in what you make that. I'll tell you, for example, we have probably, I don't know, 25, between 25 and 30 projects in there for this year. Um, a lot of them put in there, their target date was something that was before the end of last year. Okay, I've gone back to all of those grants and I reminded them of their target date and ask them if they need help completing it. I'm always available, I'm retired. So unless I'm out of town or like after eight or nine o'clock at night, I put my phone on silent. So if you call me that late, you probably won't reach me, but I'm up by 6.37 in the morning. So um, any, you know, any time outside of that, I'm easy to reach. Okay. You do have to pick your area of focus. And then when you fill this paragraph out, keep it really simple. Normally for any project you're going to do, a few sentences is probably plenty. I literally have looked at some grants where they write a book in this section here. And it's really not necessary. The only thing you need to tell us is how um, your grant activity or project is going to impact your community. And that's keeping it really, really simple. Okay, when you get the, when you're finished with that whole page, and if you want to make your, go back to the target date, if you want to make it like towards the end of the grant year, which is the end of June, you can do that. The problem is the last two weeks, people are scrambling to get their grants finished. And I've had, I, I was with my sister having a surgical procedure one day and I kid you not, I had 10 phone calls that day. And one of the people was so upset that I didn't pick up that he called the governor. And I'm not a fan of that, um, but you have to understand that, you know, you know, you guys know, we all have lives outside of Rotary. So, um, okay, uh, next slide. Okay, now this is important. Uh, some clubs will put multiple people in here. The people that will show up in your box will be the people in your club. Sometimes other than you, and you need to have a coat co-trained person if something happens to you or let's say you're ill for a while and it's uh your grants overdue we're going to allow some leeway there but if you're showing somebody else kind of the ropes on here you might want to have a co-chair so you might want to invite another person um but it needs to be somebody that's that's in dac db a lot and kind of knows the ropes so that's totally up to you. Can I, can I just interject here? Sure. <laughs> Try not to put more than two people in that yes. area um, because at the end of the grant or when you're trying to finalize the grant, everyone that you have listed over here on this contact list, they have to authorize the grant. And if you have someone that's on there and they don't even know how to do that DB, that's never gonna happen. So as few people as possible, preferably only two, yourself and whoever your your uh um is on the project preferably thank you. yes yeah it makes it easier because there are some signing even though it's done electronically so you want to have somebody that's able to do that okay um grant details now here again there's a little bit more information. Um, I actually, that slide shouldn't be in there. I think I already, I don't know. I might've gone over this already, but keep everything simple right here. 
it's all self-explanatory. Okay, now I just threw this one slide in here because we're gonna do another training uh, in January or February. And we're gonna go through the remainder of the screens that you need to complete to finalize your grant. We felt like if we give everything to you in the beginning, you're gonna get through those first few steps and that's when it can go to the district and get uh, approval for the grant. Ugh. And um, so we didn't want to go too far into it because we'll do another training and we can show you how to do all of this. And this takes a little bit of time. You do have to, let me give you an example. I have a, a check, two, two checks right now from our club. We were going to help fund Ryla this year, Ryla or Pride. We didn't send any students to Pride. We did send some students to Ryla, but we had already paid for all of them. So I took the grant and it's going to be divided uh, among uh, a local food bank and a local animal shelter. So I'm going to be modifying my final report mm. to indicate that. So if you have to change course, you should let me or Steve know, but we can help walk you through whatever steps you need to do for that. You do need receipts though. And I've asked, um, I've at, when I present the checks, I, cause the checks might not clear for a while and it might be past the grant due date. So um, I've asked both entities to bring me a receipt or a letter indicating that we uh, gave them a check and that those can serve as my receipts for my grant. Okay. Um, I just wanted to briefly show you when you're putting in documents, there's a really easy way to do it. But this is one of the screens that I look at frequently because it shows a lot of information. And um, Okay, is there anybody that has, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at your messages, but are there any questions? Mary, <clears throat> this is Amy Laboda from um, Palm Desert. I just wanna thank you for actually showing us DACDB screens rather than just telling us where to go. It makes it so much easier to see what we should be following, so thank you. You're very welcome. I'm a visual person too. So sometimes just telling me doesn't work. I got to have a screen or something to look at. So I understand completely. You're very Mary, welcome. This is Brian Sullivan from yes. Joshua Tree. Uh -huh. I was wondering how many people review these um, applications and approve them? And what happens if they're declined, or do they ever get declined? Ugh. Steve, you want to answer? Or you want me to? So Mary, Mary puts the uh, puts the uh, grant in, or, or she she makes sure that all the grant is that, that you've entered um, is it missing anything? And then at that point, she notifies me. I go in, I double check the grant, make sure that it's written out uh, the way it's supposed to be. Um, just double check, you know, Mary, um, and then I transfer that to a different grant application that goes to Rotary International, to the Rotary Foundation, and then I submit it there. And then Rotary International, there are people there at the Rotary Foundation that review all the grants that, that we've put in under our district grant, all the different projects, and then they notify me it's either been approved or they need additional information, at which point, if it's information that I know, I can put it in. Otherwise, I'll be contacting whoever's listed on the grant saying, hey, we need additional information for the Rotary Foundation that requesting this. <clears throat> and then once uh, the only other um, where you have to be uh, mindful is your club has to be in good standing with not only the district, as far as your club dues go, uh, but you also need to be in good standing with 
the Secretary of State of California, um, you have to have your uh, taxes uh, for your nonprofit. Uh, that has to be updated. Um, otherwise, you can get in trouble legally uh, by doing these grants and accepting these monies. Uh, so that's usually the only thing that would stop a, a club from, from being able to uh, get their monies for the district grant would be that they're behind on their dues with, with uh, the district or with RI, or they are not following up with the state of California. Thank I have you. a question. Sure. For Steve Yeager. Hi, Dee. Hi, I'm Dee Thomas, I Lake Elsinore. Um, I, we sent in um, a couple of weeks ago information to, to give uh, Ukraine relief but I don't know if it was received or not. I'll double check my email, D. I think that uh, I had received that information previously. I think I got it twice from your club. And so the first time or the first sender is who I responded to, but I will double check and see if there's something there, there for, from, from you and make sure that uh, um, it's the same as what I received from the other person in your club. Thank you. Ah, uh, you're welcome. And then for anybody that, in case you want to know, it's off subject, but if you've made donations or your, your club is wanting to give money to UK and Relief, um, you just send me the, the uh, grant form. If you don't have one, email me, I'll send it to you. The deadline is April 28th because I have a deadline that I have to send in one application uh, to the Rotary Foundation. And that uh, by doing your deadline on the 28th, it allows me uh, to get my done with the Rotary International. And Did if you mention late, the MOU, Steve? I'm sorry? Did you mention the MOU? No, I did not. Um, there will be a memorandum of understanding that will go out at the beginning of the year and uh, you will need to complete that and return it to me if you're wanting to do a district grant. And what it explains is that you will follow through with the grant from start to finish uh, as far as this process that we're looking at right here. Uh, at the end of the year, the final report has to be submitted because I have to send a report to the Rotary Foundation and say, this is how these funds were spent that you sent us. Uh, it's all accounting um, and, and it's proper stewardship and our, uh, following our fiduciary duty for spending these monies. Um, so that memorandum of understanding also states that if you fail to do your final report, uh, and submit it, then you won't be eligible to participate or your club won't be eligible to participate in future club grants or district grants uh, until such time that final report has been filed. So it's really important uh, if you do a community block grant, please follow through with this paperwork because this is how we report it to Rotary International so that they know how we're spending our monies or spending the, the donation. Are there any more questions about the slides that I've shown you? No. Okay, then I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, here we go. Any other questions? I have two questions, Mary. Hi. Hi, it's Mary Helen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, two, first of all, uh, DAC DB, will it be kept up to date? It has not been. I can answer that. As far as DAC DB goes, the grants <clears throat> portion and the, the only thing that I'm aware of as far as what we're doing here that's not being uh, updated is that very first page that you come to that says the has the DDF allocation. <clears throat> and that's not being calculated property, properly on that site. And it's, it's creating misnomers and, and changing numbers where it shouldn't be changing. So we're not using that particular portion. Uh, we're working with their programmers to see if they can get the spreadsheet that I send out to all the club presidents at the beginning of each year, if they can go ahead and plaster that on there so that as, as you utilize this website, you're gonna see accurate and live information. Uh, until that happens, we have to go with the sheet that is provided uh, by me to the club presidents. Um, right. And I've already spoken with uh, incoming governor Don Casper on how we're gonna keep those numbers updated 
if that VB is unable to uh, put our working spreadsheet up there um, to keep the uh, presidents and uh, the foundation chairs uh, updated on those numbers so they know what they're spending and what they have left to spend. And that's going to be really important because, as you guys know, the DDF, unspent DDF, is no longer going to roll over uh, into your club for spending next year. Uh, it's going to roll into the district pool uh, in which time any club has access to it. Second question. Um, you mentioned that, the that you needed to list a couple of members of the club as your co-chairs for the project. Oh. And then you also said that they need to authorize it. How do those people know they have to authorize it? If they're on the, that contact list, when it, when it comes time to, there's a, there's a portion or a, at some point while you're doing that grant, it's gonna give you instructions to collect club signatures. And when you hit that tab, it's going to email the people that are on that list that you've put into those contacts that you've entered. The only problem with that is if those people have opted out, they won't receive the email. <coughs> so you wanna make sure that whoever you put on there is active with that DB um, and they will receive that email to go to the grant and to put their authorized signature on it. And that their email is up to date. Mm -hmm. I typically print out a list of all of our members with their contact information and I pass it around at club meetings. And I ask people if you have any updates you need to tell me now, because I go in and I can update everybody's phone number or email or whatever the case might be. My experience in opting out, I've only had one person who's ever opted out from the emails from our Rotary Club. So, um, and, and that's been since 2007. So uh, that doesn't normally happen, but I understand that sometimes there's a lot of Rotary emails and people just don't wanna be bothered, so. So what you're saying is that now it's up to the grant writer to collect the signatures that's never been explained before. Well, it's the grant writer, when you go through, when you get to that portion and you hit collect club signatures, it should go through uh, to those individuals that are on that list. So if, if you've done that as the grant writer, if two or three days have passed and you see that it's still sitting in uh, collect club signatures, because I'm not going to move it forward until those uh, signatures are collected because once those club signatures are collected, the next step is, I believe, it uh, goes to the district for approval, which is to me. So until all the club members have that are listed there in that contact list have authorized it, I'm not going to move forward because I don't know if there's an issue with the grant or or other, you know, if there's, there's obstacles that still need to be met or if they just haven't responded to the email. So as the grant writer, you want to keep keep an eye on that and you may just need to nudge people, hey, check your email, you need to authorize this grant. Sonia, you had a question? No, it was for Mr. Steve. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I just wanted to see, because we can't get into the systems or they're off, you know, the numbers or whatnot, can will you email that out? I know you say you emailed it to the president. If, if you'll email me your request, I'll be happy to forward that, uh, that table to you. Thank you so much. Has, has the available DDF on it. And then once you receive the table, if you need some explanation on what the numbers mean or, or what is what, then uh, call me or, or email me. I'm happy to explain it. It's a lot easier to explain it on the phone, um, but I can type it all out if you need me to. Those <laughs> lists, I think Steve sent out at the beginning of the year when he had yeah. the numbers final. Right, the that president. was at the beginning of the year. And then I, I just recently sent the, um, this past week, I sent the revised list that out to all the club presidents. Um, so the club presidents should have a, a, a new list that'll show what DDF your club has left to spend uh, for the remainder of this year through, through June 30th. 
So okay. Steve, if, if I did not get that email, I'm assuming my calculations are correct that India Rotary has spent it all. Never assume anything, no. Okay. <laughs> That'll get you in trouble. If you're not sure, want to double check, email me. Like I say, I have that, that it's a working form and I have it on my on my desktop. All right, I'll so email you then. It's easy for me to just forward it to you and then you can find your club on there and, and see exactly where you're at. Okay, thanks. I have a good okay. example of not assuming you know how much DDF is left. left. The uh, Palm Desert Board was meeting and considering a grant request and the person who was writing the grant had one number and we worked with that. And then halfway through the meeting, somebody checked with Steve on the district website and found out there was a lot more money available. So check it out. And that usually happens if you've donated DDF to a particular grant. And then for whatever reason, the grant is canceled or the grant fails, <laughs> then we return that DDF back to the club uh, right. so that it can be redirected to another project. Um, and, and sometimes depending on the length of the, the, the age of the grant, sometimes that can be a, a lengthy process getting those refunds done or depending on how many people are on there. We have to make sure that our accounting is done correctly and that we still balance with uh, the Rotary Foundation as far as our DDF is concerned. Susan, you're up. You're muted. Sorry, and I have two mouses. Um, Steve, this here, is this the, the spreadsheet that you sent out? It has all of the clubs, um, DDF and allocation. That's the one you're talking about? Yes. Okay, so I have a question. On okay. mine, the, where it says the column allocation and it has that amount, for the DDF that we sent in for the global grant, it's half of that? No, no. What, what you're seeing on that table is what you receive. So if, if you'll hold that table up where it says current year, uh, let me see what it says. It's, it'll, okay, so current year allocation. Okay, the current year allocation, that's your 50% of, of the DDF that was returned to you. That's your cut. Now of that number, you can spend up to 50% of that on a community block grant, um, or you don't have to do a community block grant. And then the remainder of that 50% is what's over in your global grant column. Now, what happens is when the deadline for applying for the community block grant passes, which is probably gonna be August 31st or August 1st, somewhere around there, uh, once that deadline passes, then whatever DDF you haven't spent, if you're not doing a community block grant, then that rolls over into your uh, global, you used on the global side. Okay, so. Go ahead. Okay, so my global column is empty and I'm already outgoing president. So we didn't do the block grant. So that amount now that's in the allocation, we, that's all gonna go to our, our um, global grant then. So what's in, your, what's in your global, the far right column, what does it say? Oh, the the worst is available? Yep. The uh, far right 3884 So that's what you have to spend on the global side right there. That whole amount? Yes. Oof. Yes. And whatever portion of that you don't use by June 30th, um, and actually we should say June 15th because the paperwork still has to be processed and June 30th is too late. So whatever portion of that you don't spend, that's going to roll over into the, it won't come back to you next year. It goes into the district pool, the district DDF pool. Okay. I'm going to have to call you because our treasurer thought it was a lot, a lot less. Okay. They thought it was that's like fine. $600. Okay. No, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Thank you, Steve. I'm sorry. I don't want to hog up the meeting. No worries. No, well, that's a pretty valuable thing to discover, right? <laughs> Other questions? So if anyone looks at their spreadsheet, because I'm seeing a lot of questions on it, the dollar amounts that are there are the dollar amounts that you have to spend. You don't need to split them. We already split that for you. We split it by putting a district grant column and a global grant column. So we take, we had carryover from the year before. We add that to your current year's allocation. 
and then that becomes your available DDF. We take that amount. Um, well, your rollover can only be used on the global side. So your rollover goes to the global grant side. Your current year allocation gets split in half in those columns. Half of it is listed in the district grant. Half of it is listed in the global grant. Whatever you don't spend in that district grant column after the deadline of August 1st passes can only be spent on the global side. Now, it's not going to be added to it. You'll have to do that math yourself. You're going to have the district grant monies available, and you're going to have the global grant available. But again, I'm a phone call away, so as you're, as you're trying to figure out what DDF you have, give me a call. I'm happy to help you with it. Other questions? Comments? Okay, we'll wrap this up then a little early, get some part of your Saturday morning back. I wanna thank Mary and Steve. You know, you two spend an enormous amount of time on grants and DDF and communicating with presidents and chairs and going through all of the paperwork. I applaud you for doing that. It's, it's so very valuable to each and every one of us. And thank you for your time this morning in explaining all of this. We have two experts, folks, at our, at our command, basically, to help through this process. Don't leave any money on the table. That's the first rule. And Steve and Mary will help you find a way to spend all of it. Thank you all for your time this morning. Thank you. Remember, this will be a, a YouTube link that you will get back so that you can go back over what Mary presented on, on her slides and you can get phone numbers and contact information as well. So have a wonderful rest of the weekend and your Saturday. And if you have any questions, you know who to call. Thank you all, wait. Steve, you have something else? Let me just add, when you email me with questions on your DDF and grants and such, please put what club you're with, because if you don't, I have to go on that DB and search your name to figure out what club you're, you're, you're representing. Um, we got 60 some odd clubs and what, 1200 Rotarians. I know a lot of you, but I don't know everybody. So I don't want to give you the wrong information. So just, just stick in there, you know, RC of Indio or RC of wherever you're, you're, you're representing. And then that way, uh, I can respond much quicker because I don't have to go figuring out what club you're from. And I put my cell phone number in the chat box. Um, I live in a remote area and sometimes my phone rings and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I just get voicemails. So if I don't answer, that could very well be just leave me a detailed message. And as soon as my phone is working, I will contact you usually within 48 hours. Okay, folks, don't make it painful for Steve. Don't make him go on deck DB any more than he has to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, with that, I'll wrap it up. If you wanna look in the chat room for information, I will not end this call yet. Um, so you still have access to it. Have a great weekend, folks. And thank you, thank you for attending. Thank Bye. you very much, excellent. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. You're welcome, Steve. Thank you. You're most welcome. I guess we will see you uh, Wednesday at the uh, Global Grants session. Yes, you will. Awesome. awesome. I'll keep that uh, slide for the DDF available in case uh, uh, Dr. Helene wants me to discuss DDF. But she's she's such a pro with all of this. <laughs> she probably just, <laughs> she'll probably handle it all. So. But, but I'll be there just in case. I'm not sure how you do everything you do, Steve. Where do you live? Um, I live in Homeland, which is um, a rural area between Paris, Menifee, and Hemet. Okay. Off yeah. of Highway 74. Okay. So if you know where Heritage High School is on Highway 74, I'm about a mile north up against the hills.
Well, I have trouble with internet connection and I live in Palm Desert, so I can't even imagine what you go through and the phone. We have, believe it or not, we actually have files. So my internet isn't bad. It's typically my phone service that's, yeah. that's what we have there. Depending on what room in the house I'm in will depend on if I can talk on the phone or not. <laughs> Same, same with outside. If I walk to the front of the property, I lose, I drop my phone call. If I walk to the back of the property, drop my phone call. <laughs> You're going to have to have your own cell tower. <laughs> we tried to get one. They wouldn't put it in because we were too far away from the freeway. <laughs> That's just not right. <laughs> But it's also very handy, you know, if you get behind or some, oh man, you know, I didn't get your voicemail till today. <laughs> well, when I tell that to people that that happens, so I don't know, it's crazy. You're telling the truth. You're I am, I am, scouts on it. <laughs> hey, Marilyn, yeah. Marilyn, this is Steve Thomas. Uh -huh. um, could Steve give me his correct email, make sure I have it right? You want me to put it in the chat? Um, just tell me real quickly, okay. I'm it, writing. It's my last name. Y-A-G-E-R. Uh -huh. And then a period. Yeah. And then my first name, Steve. Got it. At gmail.com. Yeah, I thought I had it right. I just wanted to check. Thank you very much you're for welcome. everything that you do. Oh, you're welcome. And I, I, know, I know you're probably barraged this time of the year. And to take the time to do this, you and Mary, we thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you, Dee. Uh, All right. And like I hope that, you know, you know I'll, I'll look and make sure okay. that, uh, I've got your Ukraine. Well, it's really weird because I was at my tax man and he sent it to you because I said I need it to send it in PDF and Word. And I'm not sure I know how to do that. He says, I'll just send it for you. So I hope it didn't go to spam or something. You know, it's, it's, it's possible. I'll look. I've had some go to spam. Uh, my my uh, email, for whatever reason, isn't always uh, or gets selected sometimes. I'll get emails from the governor sometimes that end up in spam. I have no, no. idea there <laughs> you know last year i we gave some money to polio but it must have come back because somebody said oh you can't use global grant money for polio and i said oh, you can't because we would have given some money to polio this year you can give, you, so so here's how that works if you're making a cash contribution to polio plus oh yeah and and, and whether it's club cash or a personal donation that goes directly to the rotary foundation Okay, we've to, done that before. If you want to give DDF, then that you have to fill out one of those global grant forms and just. I was told at, I, at the last meeting we couldn't absolutely couldn't give polio grant polio money through our DDF. And you can. You That's can. what I thought. Yeah, you can. You just have to fill out that global grant transfer form and send it to me. Okay. And then I process the DDF for Polio Plus. So you just like with the with the um, Ukraine relief. With the Ukraine disaster relief, the way it's the way it works, the the Rotary Foundation isn't going to recognize uh, DDF from individual clubs. It's going to recognize it from the district. Right. So so I have to have all the clubs send me that form. So I know what DDF they have available and what they they want to go to Ukraine. And then once I have everybody's form, then I total it all up. And then I complete the submission form for the Rotary Foundation. And all it does is pull that available DDF from our district. Because that's, that's what the Rotary Foundation recognizes is DDF to our district, not to the individual clubs. The reason we track the individual clubs is because we let each club decide how to spend their own DDF. And so we track it so we make sure that they don't overspend what's been allocated to them. But then when we communicate with the Rotary Foundation, it just goes as one lump sum from our district because they don't recognize DDF to the individual clubs, only to the district. It would be, a fine. Night, it would just... be an accounting nightmare for a Rotary International to do that. Oh, that that's fine. Um, we just wanted to give five hundred dollars of our global grant money to Polio Plus, and they told me in that last meeting I, there I was in, uh, the international meeting. They said absolutely you can't do that, and I'm like, okay. So I need another can. form now. You absolutely can. You can take whatever amount of DDF that you have that's available on the global side and donate it to Polio Plus. You most certainly can. Thank you, Steve. 
You're welcome. I'll and need if, another form if, then. If you ever, if you ever <laughs> tell me that again, give them my cell phone and have them give me a call, and <coughs> we'll uh, I'll make sure we're on the same page. <coughs> okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I'll I'll ask for another form then. I'll I'll send yeah, you a shoot me an email. email. I'll send you another form. Unless you still have the blank form there, just change it and Okay. Well I have it. I I'll, I think I still have it. It's the long form, right? Not the short form. It's the long form. No, what you mean by long form or short form? That I don't know. I only have one form that I use. Yeah. Well, one form was an old request one and, and asked for everybody's signature. Um so um well, All the, right. Yeah, the form has to be signed by, I believe, the club president and either the president elect or the treasurer. President elect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Thank if you're you. not sure if it's the right one, like I say, just email me. I'll be happy to resend it. It's right on my desktop. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks again. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for all the EDC Rotary. Any other questions? <laughs> Okay, Steve, thanks for staying on. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you, Marilyn. We'll see you Wednesday. Okay, you guys have a great day. Thank you, you for attending. Bye. Bye. Bye.